Hello family, this is Pastor Gideon and this is Kingdom Matters. Today, we are dissecting the podcast of Okonfu Black, also known as Okonfu 52, son of Mezbel. He's also known as Nana Kwame Adepajesi. I've been tagged in his video so many times that I thought we should look into it. He went on a podcast and many are saying that he took a swap at Christianity and that we should look into it. So let's jump into it and see what he said and how it relates to Christianity and whether they are true or not. Now, I'm going to be reacting live and so you see me put a earpiece in my ears and then we are going to listen together. Everything is happening live in real time as we watch together. Let's go. Nana Kwame, you are welcome. Hello guys. I've always wanted to be on a podcast so I'm very, very excited to be here. Please ask me any question I'll answer. <laughs> Just not any boring question. You don't want... Now for a 10 year old to master carry to be on a podcast... That is quite an impressive feat, especially in this part of the world. I like for the fact that he has the confidence, he has that articulate ability to go on a podcast. That's great. That's really, really impressive. And also, um, as we react to what he's going to say, whether he takes a swipe at Christianity or not, I want you to be very calm. I want you to take your time with him. He's a young lad. You don't need to be harsh. You don't need to speak harsh at him. We must give people room to grow, room to say what they want to say, and then we reason them together. So please do your best. Don't go harsh and hard at him. Take your time. Let's listen to him. Boring questions. Yes, I want our tech. Tech. Technology. Oh, okay, so we'll get to technology, but um, tell me about yourself. Okay. At least I've been able to give... Um, those watching us, um, your name and a couple of things. Tell me about yourself. Okay, guys. Um, Adipa JC. I am ten years old. I was born March second, twenty thirteen, Saturday, and I'm popularly known as a kung fu black. I like to call myself a kung fu fifty two because I like see I see fifty two the number a lot of times. So I just put it there. For no reason. Okay, so you don't touch the microphone. Um, you said Okonfo Black. Why are you called Okonfo Black? Um, I was a fan of Black Sheriff, and I wanted to use his name in my name, but any time I try, it never worked. But I w- went to Kumasi, and I saw the Okonfo, I not his old. So my mom used to call me Okonfo JC, but oh. I said Black Sheriff. If I so it means that the Okonfo is actually coming from the mother. The mother gave him the Okonfu. Let's go. The sheriff. And I put Okonfu there. I get Okonfu black. Um, do you know the meaning of Okonfu? Um, I think it means priest. Or so, prophet. Prophet. So you understand? Okonfu means priest, actually. It means the traditional priest or the fetish priest, not prophet. Prophet is in Komsheni or OD for, and it is differentiated from the Christian priest who is also known as Osofu. Let's go. Stand Okonfu. Yeah. Are you okay with the name Okonfu? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Your friends are aware you are Okonfu? Those who are on social media are aware of that. Uh, are you a Christian? No, please. Have you been to church before? Yes, please. How many times? Do you remember the age... How long are so you are not a Christian? Why? For that I can't say. So you don't want to be a Christian? No. What do you want? He says he doesn't believe in Christianity. So just move on. Ask him what he believes in and then probe further into why he believes in what he believes. Full stop. So don't you believe in Jesus? Why don't you believe in Christianity? That is not the way to interview, and that's not the way to go. I often have problems with Christians and so-called interviewers in our nation who interview people. Most of them do not have good knowledge on how to interview people and also on the Christian faith. And so when people come taking a swipe at Christianity, they don't know what to say. I'm beginning to get um, concerned with the ways interviewing to this be. young So which, where do you fall? Where do you belong? The traditional belongings. So do you pour libation? Mm, yep, I do. At your age, you pour libation? Yes, I've done that before. To who? Ancestors. Your ancestors. <laughs> that is what you believe in. Yes. The man looks shocked. But that is an African traditional belief system. He pours libation. So probe further into this. 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Uh, don't go back to Jesus Christ. He says he's an African traditionalist. Ask him about his faith. That he came to die for our sins. Do you believe that? I don't actually think we died for any sins. Or he so I think it was the presenter who set him up actually to take a swap at Christianity. I wouldn't blame the young lad that much. It is the interviewer. He didn't do a good job at this point. If somebody says he's not a Christian, why do you ask him whether he believes in Jesus Christ? If he believed in Jesus Christ, he was going to be a Christian. He doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. So why do you continue asking him about Jesus Christ? He died for sins. Because if he is the Almighty and he didn't want us to sin, he should have just made sin not exist. He could have made the word sin not exist. So why did you create sin in the first place if you don't want us to sin? It means you are setting up a trap for human beings to sin. It means you intentionally created hell as a hell hole for people to go in. And that Now, like I said, he's a lad. He's a small boy. Take your time with him. You don't need to be very harsh. What he's saying, I've been a Sunday school teacher for over five years. I understand. When you are a young child, sometimes you think what you know is all there is. And so you begin to go on that rampage. And basically what he's saying is what has been transferred to him from probably the mother. And so, so he says, if God didn't want sin to exist, why did he allow it to be in the first place? And so it's like a trap. Definitely you allowed it to exist so that you can trap people. It's just like saying, it's just like saying, why does the teacher allow for possible wrong answers when you are having multiple choice questions? Just give us the answer so that we choose it so that everybody will be right. So you are setting a trap for us to be wrong. There you will say that we have failed. There is a purpose for it. In logic, it is referred to as jumping into conclusion or hasty generalization. There is a reason why God made room for sin to happen. And so we can go into that. But you don't conclude that because God has made room for sin to exist, it means that God set a trap and he is not almighty because if he was almighty, he was going to remove sins so that things would be in the best state they could possibly be. Now, that is wrong. It is not supposed to be like that. You are jumping into conclusion or you are making hasty generalizations. There is a reason behind it. And now, you don't believe in Christianity. So, whatever Christians are going to say for the reason why there is sin will be something you will not agree with. That's why the presenter was supposed to carry on. The presenter was not supposed to be bothering him on Jesus Christ, on sins, on going to heaven and all that. Ask him about the traditional belief system. Ask him what he believes, what is going to happen to him when he leaves this place. You understand? You asked him, he said he pours libation. He pours it to the ancestors. Ask him about how the ancestors receive the drinks when they pour it. Let him explain his belief system. That is it. Let's go on. How does it make sense if you keep on thinking about it a million times? So, I don't actually think he's almighty in a way because if you're almighty, you could have not stopped sin. And now we are sinning, you are trying to forgive us for sin. So if you're all forgiven, why don't you forgive us for sins? And when we're in hell, we don't have any way to talk to you. So how do you forgive us in the first place if we are there? That is why whilst you're on this earth, you don't have to commit any sin so that you'll be thrown into the, he the, the hellfire. But why didn't he just stop sin if he doesn't like sin? Sin is not, is not good because he doesn't sin. So why did he create sin? Automatically meaning that human beings created sin on our own. So we are powerful than him. Even if he created us, we are more powerful than him. Uh, Adipa, where are you learning all this from? No. See, the person doesn't believe in the Christian worldview. He doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. He doesn't believe in the Christian belief system. And so asking him about heaven, forgiveness, repentance, is not going to make sense to him anyway. Until he has come to that understanding to believe, you are not going to be able to force him at this point. So just put aside what you know and just move on and ask him about his belief system. So if he says God sets sin as a trap, it's just like asking this question. Why did God create man in a way that man must eat? He should have just created us in a way that we wouldn't eat because he doesn't eat, literally. So if God doesn't eat, why does he want us to eat? Now, it is because we have to eat. That's why we have to work. And so now he has given us unnecessary hardship, right? Now, these are the ways and the systems of God in the Christian worldview on how God wants things to be. You cannot debate it. It's, they are the ways of God. It is a given in Christianity. It is a presupposition. 
This is the Christian worldview. God created man in his own image and in likeness to relate with him. And so God in the beginning, Genesis chapter 4, will come to the God and have fellowship with man. And so because of that, for there to be real fellowship, there should be real choices. And so man should be able to choose to relate with God or not. If not, man is just a computer or is just something that cannot really relate because there can be true relationship without choices. So as much as God really wants to relate with man and he has made man in a way that man can relate, man must also be able to make the choice of relating with God. That's what makes a relationship a real one. But then if man cannot choose to reject God or not, then there can be a true relationship. Example, my computer cannot choose to reject me. I choose to have it, but it cannot choose not to have me. And so we can have a real and a cordial relationship. Do you get it? And so man, having been made in the nature of God, had the right of choice to either reject or to choose God. And then in rejecting and choosing God, either way, there are consequences to that effect. Because when God is outside of the equation, there are things that are going to happen. And when God is in the equation, there are things that we are going to benefit from. That is the Christian worldview. Man has the right to choose or to reject God, but then each decision is going to have consequences. Do you understand? Basically, so it's just like the exams. You have multiple choice questions. One of them is true. The three or the four left are wrong. When you choose the wrong ones, you are going to be marked wrong. And when you choose the right ones, you are going to be marked right. And then you are going to be right. And so at the end of the day, there will be rankings. There will be, we'll be able to tell who is right, who is smarter, who is intelligent, who is relating. In the same way, God has set standards and given us things to do and things not to do. And then by those things, he's able to know those who love him, those who are able to relate with him, those who want him and those who don't want him. And then people go to hell. They don't go to hell because God put them there. They go to hell because they don't want to be with God. And the absence of God is actually hell and it's torment. Basically, I will not explain this into detail. Maybe you need to find another time and we'll explain these things. Now, let me bring it to the first level as a Sunday school teacher. Think about this. Look at your relationship with your mother as an example of our relationship with God. Would you think that your relationship with your mother would be a real one to you if your mother tells you that you cannot object to anything that she ever tells you to do? Ever, if, if ever she tells you to stand up, you have to always stand up. If she ever tells you to sit, you have to sit and you don't have any right to think for yourself or do any other thing. Anything she says is what you are supposed to do. Would you think that that relationship is right if you are supposed to behave like a robot any time you deal with your mother? I've seen a couple of your videos where you were objecting to things that she was telling you to do. Now, that doesn't mean you're a bad child. That means that you are thinking. That means you're a reasonable being. That's how God made us. And that's actually the reason why we can choose God or actually reject God. Do you get it? And that is to show whether we really want God we really love God or we want to be on our own and we want to do what we want to do. And definitely there are consequences to that effect. Do you get it? So like I said, he's a young lad. Just don't be harsh on him. Take your time with him. He says that men are not working and they are praying, thinking that God will help them. They should go and find work because there's no God. Now, the first thing is that the Bible and God does not support laziness. The Bible is the one that says we should work. In fact, the Bible is the book that says that the hand that does not work should not eat. So the Bible does not harbor or does not support laziness and not working. It was God who put man in the garden and gave him work to do. And so right from the onset, God has established in the scriptures and in his word that man is supposed to work and to fend for himself. Full stop. So why do we have to pray? It is because life is not just physical. It's not just work, 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 work. Anybody who thinks life is work, 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 work has not understood what life is. Man is spirit, soul, and body. What it means is that there is a component of man that goes beyond the physical realm. It means that man is able to relate with God. Man is able to relate with spiritual beings. And also man is able, beyond animals, is able to um, respond to a heavenly or a higher power. You understand? That is why we pray. And also the purpose of man is given to him by a higher power, by the supreme being. And so man prays in order to discover and to relate with the supreme being, to know what his purpose and his path in this life is. That is why we pray and that's why we relate with the supernatural and the unseen world. 
Are you getting it? So we pray to get that influence. And sometimes the supernatural or the superpower or the supreme being, the God that we believe in Christianity, helps us in the things and the path that he has chosen for us to go. That is why we pray. So that is a wrong concept. Man works, yet he relates with a spiritual being that directs his path, that shows him what he's supposed to do here and also blesses and helps him. You understand? Let's go on. Now, I nearly forgot that he also said God does not exist. Now, if God does not exist, why does he pour the libation? He says to his ancestors. Now, that's wrong. I think he's been trained in the African traditional systems, but he has not fully graduated to understand everything. There is no African traditional system that does not believe in the existence of God. And so at this point, he is totally off because they believe in at least three things. They believe in ancestors. They believe in smaller gods or mediums through which they pray through to the supreme being. They don't want to contact the supreme being directly, so they pray through other gods, smaller gods, to reach the supreme being. That's the belief system of the African traditional system all over Africa. So, if he says that there is no God, what he's saying, it, now it becomes confusing. It is neither here nor there. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Now God is, even if he's there, crazy, he's at his place doing something. <laughs> it's looking for food. Oh. He... Now that's blasphemous. If you know the concept of God, you know that God, if it, there is something like God, I'm talking from his perspective, that being does not need food to survive. And that being is not looking for things. That being knows all things and that being is all powerful. So you see... He's transmitting ignorance right here. This is full ignorance. No. He, 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 if he cares so much, you make you successful. People never pray to God. Ah, they just got money out of a uh, containment hole. People got money for working. You have never, I've never in my life heard that this man sat down and just kept on praying for five years. And at the end of the day, he, he, he got money. But you can hear that. This guy worked hard in the government. The people who pray and they have a job, but they still not going on. So you don't believe in prayers? I believe prayers work, but not to him. Because he himself, when we say a prayer to him, he, he doesn't do I believe prayer works, but not to him. To who? To whom do you pour your libations? And to what do they do with the drinks that you pour? Let's go on. Use it. The prayer never comes to life. It's only when you yourself you are doing it. If they say if you pass the exam, you get this, and you keep on praying, you are praying, you are praying, you are praying, you are praying. And you don't learn. You won't get it. But if you don't even pray, you learn alone, you go. So the praying itself is a distraction from you to achieve what you are. So God is doing, if he's there. He now this is a bit out of place is assuming as if christians pray only in order to succeed we don't pray in order to succeed the bible teaches hard work the bible teaches labor the bible says a man who is diligent in his way he will not stand before me and he will stand before great kings the bible says a little sleep a little slumber then will your poverty come upon you suddenly so the bible talks about hard work the bible talks about serious work and diligence the bible never condones laziness and the Bible actually entreats everyone to work hard. You understand? Yes. And if you work hard, you are going to benefit. It is God who said that seed time and harvest will not seed. So whilst you are here, whatever you are planting, God has established that you are going to reap from it. Yes. But that does not mean that prayer does not involve God to help us in certain things. There are certain intricacies of life that goes beyond human ability and the involvement of the supernatural, the hand of God, also helps us to put us further. You understand? Now we are going to go on and listen to him. He's trying to do it so no one can stand up to him. I want to invite you to church this Sunday. I will come if I'm invited, but most of the elf friends they are doing I'm not sure that offering is going anywhere but their pocket. In fact, all the pastors who pray and stuff, they know about it, but they are using that as their own this thing, as something to get in their pocket. You you find you have a problem with pastors taking a uh, tithe and offering. Yes, because the offering is going to you. It's in your own hand. The money you, is in your own hand. If you want to give it out, you give it out. But the money is not going to God. He's not going to come out and take the money. 
And if he created human beings, automatically he has money. So why are you collecting offering in the first place? Now, he's not a Christian, so I'm not going to blame him on why Christians take offering. And of course, a lot of uh, misconceptions have been carried about with giving and receiving offering. And so he has the right by his observation to say what he's saying. But Christians don't give offering directly to God in order for God to do something for them. Christianity is a community of believers. And number one, they have a purpose. And so offerings are taken in order to sponsor their purpose. And every member who is blessed is supposed to give according to how they are blessed in order to sponsor the commission or the assignment that is given to the people of God. So the people of God are supposed to sponsor the work of God. And it includes taking care of the ministers of the gospel and also taking care of the mission. Secondly, the community of believers needs to be taken care of. They are the less privileged, they are the vulnerable among the community. And it is supposed to be taken in order to take care of them. And so you can see right from the early church in Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5, they were giving offerings and selling things and bringing it to church. And then because of that, the poor in the community of the believers were taken care of and none lack anything that is the system christianity runs by so so in a place where the christian systems are working properly where of course there are tests there are people that have hijacked the system who are using it for their own um parochial interest but then in a system where it is working properly the less privileged the people who do not have jobs the people who are struggling the people who are poor are taken care of by the church and also the mission and the purpose of god are taken care of by these same resources that are provided by the members basically that's the reason why we take offerings and yes when we do that we are showing faith in god and so that faith in god in christianity is something that god recognizes and something that god favors you understand because in christianity we live by faith we walk by faith just that there are extensions where people have taken it to an extreme where they teach that everybody must sow and whenever they are sowing or whenever they are giving they are doing it so purposely so that they will prosper that is not a basic teaching of Christianity. It's an extreme teaching that has been introduced by a group in order to help themselves instead of getting the ministry and the purposes of God financed and also the people of God blessed. Could it be a scam? Could it be that they don't know? They know. People it is not a scam. It is also not because they don't know. It is because there is a system that Christianity runs by. That's how Christianity runs. Offerings are a part of Christianity. It's not just Christianity. It was part of Judaism as well. Anytime God's missions and God's purposes were to be carried about, people were allowed to give freely. And then those free givings were taken and then used to sponsor those works, basically. People will do what they know just to trick you. So whilst you are not knowing it, they are just collecting from your pocket. So as you know already, you have already gotten their money. There's nothing you can do about it. Who is your favorite pastor here in Ghana? This person says he's not a Christian. Why do you ask him about pastors, Christianity, Jesus Christ? This is out of order. Listen, presenters must learn to do the right thing. You must learn to interview people rightly. I don't have any favorite pastor. Do you believe in anointing? Anointing. Look What's at that? that? Like, uh, the guy said, asking interesting something. questions. Why are you asking boring questions? Do you believe in deliverance? Do you know deliverance? Giving birth. No, deliverance. Somebody being prayed for and the person uh, comes under the unction uh, under the unction of the Holy Spirit and the person falls down. Do you believe in that? No, I think it's fake. You don't believe that one day a pastor will pray for you and you fall? Oh, no, it won't even work. If it, if it works, Christ, it's not going to be the pastor's work. It will be the energies that are in that room. <laughs> so, no, let's put that aside. Even if so, he's taking a strong stance against Christianity. Even if he's prayed for and something should happen, he believes that it is not because he was prayed for, but because of the energies in the room. Now, this is because of the African traditional background that he has. He believes that the ancestors are around him. He believes that uh, the ancestors support him. He believes that there are spirits around him and they support him. Now, that's fine and that's fair. He is entitled to his belief systems. But for you to think that when a pastor prays for you, it doesn't happen. I should, he shouldn't be contributing or talking about Christianity. He should be focusing on his um, faith. He should rather be focusing on his faith. But once again, I blame the presenter for not doing a good work. Adipa, you are a spiritual person. Are you a spiritual person? Yes. 
you are spiritual. Yes. Do you see things? Do you see beyond these two eyes? Hmm. I can say that. So these are the types of questions I was expecting from the interviewer. Ask him about him and then his worldview and the things that he's experiencing. And then we take it from there. I have heard some stuff, seen some stuff. What have you heard? Can you hear my grandma just coughing at times? <coughs> Your grandma? Yes. Where is she? She's dead. She's dead. And you can hear your grandma cough. There was this night I was just going down and I just heard it. <coughs> so when I came inside and I told mommy I heard that, she quickly just said that it was grandma because there was no one downstairs. And she was inside. So you believe that is your grandma? Yes. Uh, Have you, did you, did you ever, you never met your grandma? No. So you, and you have, you've heard her talking before or something? Yes. And this is somebody who doesn't believe in the God of the Bible, and that's fair, and that's also fine. But then, he has been indoctrinated, he has been made to believe that spirits are around him. And so, what he thinks he heard was actually being told to be the grandmother. Now, I want you to think about it. So, basically, all that he's saying are things that has been told him by his mother. Basically, believe in ghosts. Or ancestors? I believe in both. But you don't believe in Jesus Christ? No. <laughs> don't bring Jesus Christ into the equation. Let's go on. No, I can't. So the story of Jesus Christ and the story of ghosts and ancestors. Which one makes sense? Now, I want you to know the reason why he, he has this stance. And that's fair. Everybody can have what they want to believe. But the reason why he believes in ancestors and ghosts and believes that that cough he had is actually the grandmother who is already dead is because of what he's been told. Now, he doesn't want to believe the story of Jesus Christ. He doesn't want to believe in Jesus Christ. Yet the story of Jesus Christ has been documented and it is the most documented story. The Bible, the Old and the New Testament is the most Asian book that has most manuscript till today it has most evidence available till today he doesn't want to believe that because that's what he has been indoctrinated with he's been indoctrinated that he's an african traditionalist he believes in spirits and ghosts. so as a young boy he will go with it and that's fine you understand but i want you to know the reason why he believes it is not because there is proof because he cannot prove the ghost he cannot prove the ancestors yet he believes in them yet he doesn't want to believe in god and say God does not exist. Do you get a do you get a drift? Ask him so many questions, he can't answer. Adipa. What okay, so let's imagine Jesus Christ appears here. What is some of the things you're gonna ask? Ask him, why didn't you avoid human beings from creating sin? Why are you against sin? Why is hell there for the first place? Why can't you confront them in heaven? Why should hell be there if you have all forgiven? All forgiving should never It means you have a lot of questions for God. He, the thing is that he, he's not there and he won't be there. Who created you? So if God is not there, you still believe in ancestors. And then, listen, this even um, challenges his stance on African traditional system because it's not just about ancestors and ghosts. Uh, African traditional believer also believes in smaller gods and the supreme being and so this is a false belief system in fact it's a half big truth that have been sold out to him and so that's a problem it is not just a problem for christianity even in african traditional religion his concept and his understanding will not be bought it will not it will not it will not fly who created you my mother she gave birth to me no adopa you didn't get my question very well who created you I believe through science, human beings were born, not created. And <laughs> now that's fallacious. Your mother cannot be God. You don't understand the meaning of God. When you say God, you are talking about the uncreated creator, the beginning of all things, the one who began all things, who didn't have beginning. So if you say your mother is your God or creator, you are saying that your mother doesn't have a beginning, which is not true. Since you are talking about your grandmother who is dead, it means that 
there have been many 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 grandparents and so when we get to the last man man then we have to determine how human beings began on earth and that is going to be the biggest problem you are going to face and so you will now begin to use science to try to explain different theories but then know that with every design there is a designer with every effect there is a cause for earth to exist it means that something brought it into being and that is the god we are talking about which you say does not exist and so you can allude to any scientific explanation which does not have evidence to the happening and that's also fair you are entitled to your belief system but it is also clear that if you are going to believe let's say the big bang theory or any other theory you must also believe without evidence that it happened which will also get you into the realm of faith as christians so either way you are not free from belief systems and if human beings were created in the first place i never got to see god as my father or god as my mother the only person who cared for me is my mother she buys my clothes she buys my food she pays my fees she does everything god doesn't do anything for me and if I'm supposed to stand here and say he has done something for me, I'm supposed to ask. And I say he gave money to my mother. He never came and said my mother should collect the money that he's giving to But me. it was God who caused people to buy from your mom's pub and restaurants. Buy from Wrong. Now, I don't get this interviewer. When we say God is moving through people and God does things, we don't mean that God appears and does it. God has already set the system. It is because of God creating the world putting things in order. Science will tell you that if gravity should have been stronger by just a little margin, things would have been different. The world couldn't have existed. If the earth was closer to the sun by just some few kilometers, all of us would have been bent. If it was further from the sun by certain measures, all of us would have frozen. That should let you know that God is working and helping us. And the Bible says he holds all things by the power of his word. That's what we mean by God helping us. He has set up a conducive environment for all these things to happen. So that is God helping us. If I go and ask those people and I say, is it God who called them? They will say no. God cannot just call a person through them. If you have the feeling that he's in you, it could be anything else. But everyone just assumes it's him because they have no other reason to think of now let's apply the same logic to the ghost issue so that cough that your mother said was so that cough that your mother said is your grandmother could have also been anything applying the same logic of god to that situation it could have been anything but you believe that it was your grandmother because your mother told you that yes yet the document of God that we have, the Bible, according to your Christian worldview, shows this emphatically and then you are made, made not to get it. Now, I believe that he's growing up, he's being logical, he's being trained. The time is going to come, he will be able to read the Bible for himself and then he's going to make a decision. And trust me, if he's not prejudiced against Christianity and he reads the Bible for himself, he's going to forsake everything that he's been indoctrinated with. If it's just a singular good meet that's here, and you see the plate is fresh white. You can say that this was the only goat meat on the plate. But if you see all your things, you can be like, mm, I think there was another goat meat or three or, or four more or five goat meats on the plate before I'm taking this goat meat. But there's nothing else there. If people think there's nothing else, it could be a spirit, it could be a ghost, it could be anything. You don't know. So God, to you, God doesn't exist. I don't know, but from what I think, makes more sense than what people say you think god doesn't exist there is nothing like god when god created humankind he should have created a world that things were free money should have not existed now it creates evil people will do you bad but they are still up there so this is like a boy describing his ideal world you see it's just like a small child also asking the teacher when you set the exams why do you put wrong answers in the multiple choice questions you want us to be wrong right you should have done it this way now there is a reason why they set the exams the way they set it it is actually to test us and so that they will be able to rank us and be able to check our understanding 
Now, there is also the reason why God designed the world the way he made it. Why we must work, why we must eat, why we will be tempted, why we must be morally upright. And then at the end of the day, according to a Christian worldview, he says there's going to be judgment. There's a reason for it. Now, that is hasty generalization or jumping into conclusion to think that because everything is not free, there is no God. Think about it this way. It is God who has set up things to work that way so that he can judge us, so that we can be accountable and be responsible for our decisions. Does that not make more sense than you thinking that there's no God because we are now responsible for everything? There are people who are just so sneaky, they get away with it. But the people who are just not sneaky and they are like, oh, God did this, God did that. He didn't do anything. The person revealed his own self. What happens in the dark always comes to light. Yes, whatever happens in the dark always comes to light. According to a Christian worldview, there's going to be a day of judgment. God is going to bring everything to light. And then people who did good are going to be rewarded. Those who did bad are going to be punished for it. So nobody is going to be sneaky enough. At the, at the end of the day, everything will be brought to light. And so if somebody is being evil, is being sneaky, as you said, and is on top and is winning, that's not the end. There's going to be a time of reckoning and a time of judgment. That's what the Christian worldview believes. And see, it makes sense in Christianity to see things that way. Instead of taking the loss into your hands, rather to also be sneaky and try to outwit others, knowing that tomorrow you are going to stand to be judged. Adipa, where do you believe after death? Where do we go to? I believe we go where we want to go to. So after death, Adipa, where would you want to go to? Now, is it even the same with our own homes? Can you decide that I go to which home I want? No. You go to the home where we you want have to work for. You believe you go to heaven, you go to heaven. You have never seen anyone going to hell before. When a person dies, you don't see their ghost going up. For all you know, the ghost could still be here. But the Bible says that it's appointed unto man. But the Bible was written by man. So man could be lying. Who told? You said the Bible was written by man. Yes, or God wrote the Bible. Okay, so Adipa is saying that the Bible was written by man, so man could be lying. In the same way you believe that you heard a voice and that voice is your grandmother, Christians believe that there is a supernatural being who inspires men to write his words and that they, he can carry them along and if he's all powerful he should be able to do it carry them all along to write the things he want them to write and so that's what christians believe that everything that has been written for us in scriptures are things that god designated to be written and so god moved them to write it and so though written by men they are the words of god and that's the ways of god God will do everything through men. He will not come and appear and drop a book down and say, read, this is my word. No, he always does it through men. Adipa, I don't know, but the kind of things you are telling me today, I'm really they sure. They make sense more than the things you hear by a pastor, don't they? Do they? No. Do they? Do you have a Bible in, in your room? You don't have a the Bible? The person is not a Christian. Why do you keep asking him about Bible and Christianity? Must he have a Bible? I've never read one before. In your life? Nope. Can you tell me any quotation in the Bible? I don't know what a quotation is. Because I don't read it. Because it's just a waste of time. Because it's like you're having your phone and as you're watching someone's video, the person is getting more money. So as you're reading the Bible, the person is getting more belief off your mind. And then I'm not going to let someone feed on my brain just because they wrote a book. Look at the contradiction. He says he's not going to let somebody feed off his mind because he wrote a book. So he believes some way, somehow that God has written a book. And by reading it, he's going to put faith into it. And by that, God is feeding off his mind. Are you getting it? Now, that aside, Adipa, you read other books and you read other systems and you believe of it. And so even now, though you don't want to believe in God and the God of the Bible, so Adipa, although you don't want to believe in the God of the Bible, whatever you have said so far about ancestral worship and the pouring of libation is also a belief system that you have been fed with, which somebody is feeding off of you. Do you get it? And so either way, whether you choose the Christian way or the African traditional belief system, you are being fed off it. Do you get it? And so at the end, it's either you totally reject the African traditional system, which your mom has tried to um, imbibe you with, and then go 
all the way being agnostic or an atheist. And that is also going to be another belief system on its own. Either way, you believe something. Because if you say you're an atheist, you are going to believe that there is no God. That's a belief system. Hey, 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 when you go to school, do you say the Lord's Prayer? I came to school to learn. I didn't come to school for the Lord's Prayer. So that's the end. First and foremost, I would say our comfort black or comfort 52 is very impressive. With his age and his eloquence, that is very, very impressive. He's done very well um, articulating what he believes and what he stands for. That's good. Um, having said that, nevertheless, his faith system is not concrete. It is actually based on what he has been fed with. And basically, you can see that it's based off what his mother has fed him. The things his mother stands for is what he's being fed of. If not, he wouldn't believe that a coffin you hear with nobody around will be your grandmother. And also, he wouldn't believe that the mother is actually a god. Your mother is not God and she's not a goddess. She's going to live and she's going to be with you and we pray for a long time. Then after some time, she's going to die. You understand? If she was actually God, she wasn't going to die. And so you can see that with your own worldview of African traditional system where you believe in ancestral worship and the point of libation, you still have challenges here and there. And so I will encourage you to keep reading. And then as you grow up, make sure you get the Bible and read it for yourself. Don't let anybody sell you something because there are many people who stood against Christianity and the Bible and they thought that the Christianity that people were exhibiting was all that there was until they read the Bible and they finally realized that there are a lot of people out there who misrepresent Christianity and then they actually found the truth in Christ. I believe that is going to be your case if you are not prejudiced against Christianity. So don't let anybody shut you up from reading the Bible and learning about Christianity with no biases and see what is going to become of you. I believe that if you do that, you are going to come up as something great tomorrow in the faith. It's not far-fetched at all. Yes. And then with the interviewer, I'm really disappointed. That's not a way to interview people. Number one, when somebody says he's not a Christian, you leave Christianity and then you ask him about his faith and you delve deep into his faith. Not asking about Jesus, the Bible, sin and heaven. You are just making him, because he's not well versed in it, saying things that cannot be proved, you understand. And he's just making sweeping statements about Christianity. But that's fine. We will spare him because he's a child. But you are to be blamed because you couldn't channel the questions the right way. He came there for technology. So give him technological questions. And then if you want to ask about faith, ask him about his personal faith and his conviction. Don't be asking him about things about which he has no knowledge or which about which he has no understanding. And then if you are going to ask questions about Christianity, you should make sure that you know what you are asking about. Make sure you understand the questions you are posing to him. You see, if you if he says something about Christianity, you are not able to defend it. Are you able to ask probing questions that will expose the truth? And so that is very, very protective. I believe that we are getting into an age, an age and a time where people are going to glue for the truth. And Christianity has stood the test of time. Christianity has faced a lot of philosophical ages and it has stood the test of time. And even in this new age, and if the Lord tarries, even in this age, it's going to stand the test of time and many more people will be running into the faith because it is only Christianity that has the true answers to the questions of the world. God bless you. This has been Pastor Gideon. Don't be harsh on the young boy. He's going to come to faith very soon. God bless you. I'll see you in the next one. Shalom.